every full-scale airplane flying out there has hatches. Hatches are a methodology that we can open the outside of the aircraft and access something on the inside of the aircraft. And the hatches are necessary because of the aerodynamic shape of the airplane. The hatches can be very simple spring-loaded hatches like on the cowl of a Cessna 150 that is open to check the oil before each flight, or the hatches can be extremely complex cargo doors for literally half the side of a Boeing 777 freighter opens up to load cargo, shuts, and the whole um, airplane is pressurized. So let's talk a little bit about hatches and model, uh, model aircraft. When the first model aircraft were built, the rubber-powered uh, free fly flyers, uh, rubber, then gas in the 1930s, the wings were always held on by rubber bands, typically, uh, eventually nylon bolts, but the early ones had uh, rubber bands holding on the wings. And when the wing, and this was in case the airplane crashed, the wing could pop off, and some of the models were pretty big just to be able to transport them. You had to have the wing come off the airplane. With the wing off the airplane, you had complete access to the interior of the fuselage to do whatever you needed to do. And the models were important enough back then, it took enough time to build, oftentimes a wing would come off between flights if you had to inspect anything. When radio control equipment became common in the 1950s, uh, really up through uh, the mid-1990s, where you had radio control but gas-powered engines, the, the, the wings were removable as before, so the only thing that you put into a model back in those pre-electric flight days was there was a rechargeable NICAD battery that went into the airplane to power the electronics, which were the servos and the receiver, because there was no electric motor. Uh, this battery was charged the night before and could typically last through the flying day at the field. So you would install the battery with the wing off, put on the wing, and that was it for the, for the day flying. You really didn't have any hatches or need to inspect the interior of the aircraft. The fuel tanks was a self-contained unit. It was epoxied in the front. Some brass tubes came out that you could use for overflow to fill up the fuel tank, but you just didn't need ready access to the interior of the fuselage, typically. That all changed with electric-powered flight. Electric-powered flight, you have to change, swap out the batteries between each flight, so there has to be some type of hatch that you can have access to the airplane. So in this video, I want to discuss several models, just to give you an idea of the number of hatches out there. And what you do by seeing this video, seeing other examples of the field, you start to build a catalog of hatches that you can build um, for your model airplane. Sometimes with almost ready to fly, fly aircraft, the hatches are built in. I'll show you a few of those. Others, um, if you uh, build a kit from plans, you may have to add a hatch like I had to do on some of mine. Others, if you design an airplane, you have to design the hatch completely from the beginning. Smaller models, like the Guilas conversion, I don't really have a hatch. Rather, I have an opening in which I can inspect the electronics or place the battery in place. So let's take a look at some of the hatches for various models. This is the E-Flight Timber. It's a great ready-to-fly model. It comes pretty much out of the box like this. I covered it on my own. And by the way, I have a lot of videos on covering this, other things. YouTube only lets me put five cards up there, so there won't be cards for every airplane I um, describe here, but there, there's information on my YouTube channel. On this very well-designed kit, this is the hatch. This is where the batteries go to swap out between flights. What happens is it's very well designed, but there's a little push button right here. We push that, and this hatch comes off. And this is the location for the battery. Note that the hatch has a little tab that always goes in front, so the airflow keeps it in place. It just clicks right into place. Again, very well designed. The other thing important with the hatch is we can swap out the battery. Note the nylon straps, which are good backup, just in case the hatch falls off, which could always happen. Uh, so we have two ways to keep the um, battery in place. But again, just this little push button, you can see the little catch goes back like that. So we saw the very well-designed uh, mechanical hatch for the E-Flight Timber, but you can purchase hatches, mechanical hatches, on eBay and even on Amazon if you go RC Airplane Hatches. There's a variety of spring-loaded hatches that have been usually developed for almost ready to fly models that are available for your purchase. An example is this Dubro, and you can see that it's called a hatch latch. If you search for Dubro hatch latch, you'll come up with this. So it's a little bit hard to see in the plastic, but this thing slides back, it's spring loaded, and you can mount it onto your airplane. They have instructions here to make your own mechanical hatch. And I wanna show that on this um, live wire kitten model that I built. 
So what I decided to do on this was to make the hatch on the bottom of the aircraft. I think the bottom of the aircraft is good location. It's kind of out of the way so it doesn't clutter up the side of the aircraft. But this is the hatch right here. It is uh, 1 32nd inch plywood. This is that little slide hatch that I mentioned. So what I'm going to do is I simply slide this back and it comes off. There's a little tab right here. This is plywood again. There's plywood here. This just slides into place. And then this is a spring-loaded hatch, catch, that just goes under this lip located here. And that works out very well. So I have complete access to put in my battery here. I can inspect the servos. Note that I mounted those upside down so I could see them. This just slides into place. You pull this back and everything is held in. Just be careful when you put this in, you're going to be using some epoxy glue to keep everything in place. You just don't want to get a little bit of excess epoxy that would glue the uh, sliding mechanism and hatch as well. But that's a very good example of a mechanical hatch you can buy, or hatch latch that you can buy to have a very effective hatch. So this is my model of uh, the Livewire Champ from Manzano Laser Works, just a great flying model. And so I had to figure out something to do with a hatch on this. Um, I probably could have put the hatch on the bottom. I just didn't think of it at the time because uh, it was such a big model. So what I elected to do was to put the hatch on the side of the aircraft. And notice there's a little handle right here. This merely opens up like this. There is some uh, tape that I used for a hinge, nothing fancy. And what I did was I took a rare earth magnet. You can get these off of Amazon. They're just called rare earth magnets. They're just very powerful magnets. I had a magnet here and just a blind nut head there. You got to put it in just the right amount. And what happens is that magnetically holds the hatch in place. The wind flow goes this way, so there's no danger of it blowing off. And this is an example of a magnet to hold the hatch in place. The learning point on this hatch is it works fairly well but I just didn't make it big enough. So when in doubt, make the hatch bigger because you want some maneuvering room to put in your battery, connect everything. This is just barely big enough, but not, I would have made it bigger if I were to make it again. As I mentioned in the opening to the video, you get a lot of ideas on hatches. There's some very skilled modelers out there that have some scale-like hatches that are just wonderful. But I got an idea for this hatch from a mountain models aircraft that I built really about 20 years ago, one of my very first electric-powered uh, electric aircraft. And that just, you put the hatch on the top portion of the fuselage with magnets. So this is the hatch located right here. It's much like the side hatch. For the hinge, what I used was Tyvek material. That's the very strong plasticky type material that mailing envelopes are, are made constructed out of at your post office. And if you can get a few of those free mailers, cut them and glue them in place, they're wonderfully strong hinges. And what I did to hold it in place, you'll see again a rare earth magnet, and located here is a little tack that's glued into place, and this cannot blow off at all because it's aligned with the airstream. You just slide it down, and you can hear that little click, and it's a very solid, easy to use hatch, complete access to everything inside, and the battery goes up front. This is a Stevens uh, Aero Buzz Bomb model, one of my favorite flyers. It's just a, a great model to goof around with at the field. This hatch, again, is on the bottom of the aircraft. Uh, the Stevens Aero models are very well designed. This hatch was plenty big enough, as you can see. There's a little cooling hole. That's all fine. What happens on this one, there's a little li um, lip that goes underneath here. You've seen that on the other one. And in this case, there are two rare earth magnets, one located here and another located here. So this one fits in pretty well. When I go it in, you can hear the click. And it's, it's held in place really quite well. I just wasn't sure that could hold on for all the time. So what I did was I installed a little dowel and I put a rubber band around here just as a safekeeper for the hatch. But um, there's a lot of things poking out, dowels from this old aircraft. I think it fits in well, and I'm pretty sure that the hatch will stay in place in this model. This is my original design of the Blackburn monoplane. Uh, the plane just flies great. I will put a video card up for this. 
So this one is a fairly thin fuselage. The triangular lower fuselage, there's not a lot of space to put hatches and all that. So what I did was I just took a very simple approach with a rubber band. This is the hatch right here and the battery fits in to the fuselage in this location. And I could put magnets on here, I absolutely could, but just a quick and easy way, this just falls into place. The rubber band goes around here. Again, it's a very slow flying airplane, nothing fast, but that is what I use for this hatch, just for a quick and easy option. This is my Guelo's Hellcat conversion. I'll put a card up for this. Um, this is a wonderful little airplane, but this is big enough where I've got to have some access to it with the mid-mounted wing there's really the wing is glued in the wing doesn't come off so there's really no way to go underneath for access that's going from the top and what i did was i just made this removable hatch and to have access the battery goes here for center gravity and just to look at what else is, is on here uh, here's the elevator servo etc so because this was a prototype just to make sure the model would fly okay there is no attachment mechanism for this what i did was I took some clear plastic tape, put it in the front and back for the initial test flights, and that was fine to hold it into place. This would be an ideal case to have, again, the rotating uh, hinge with a uh, motor on it. You know, I'll probably put that on just to make a more permanent, longer lasting um, installation of this hatch. But if you want to do test flights, tape front and back held everything in place for the type of flying that this model does. Some models will actually not have a hatch. This is a profile flyer that I made out of a 3 16th inch foam board. Um, just put it together so it's two widths wide, foam wing, etc. So these are the Park Zone Electronics. The battery goes right here. There is no hatch. Everything is held on uh, by the Velcro. This is glued in place and everything is outside. In line with that profile model, with the smaller models, you just, um, it can be a little bit tricky putting in hatches anywhere. Again, when I convert these Guilos models as a prototype just to see how the thing goes together and flies, this Aronka flies just great. And what I did here was, there's no hatch, but rather an opening. The battery goes right here in front, there's Velcro, and then I just left the bottom open to see the electronics and where everything is connected uh, to the battery and the controls and all that. So you could make a hatch in this if you were gonna have a longer flying one. If I were to make another one, I would but it's okay with the smaller models to have no hatch at all. We all enjoy our electric powered airplanes. All those airplanes have to have some hatch or access to where to put in the battery between flights. There are many, many more hatches out there, but this is a good starting point that should give you a variety of options to create a hatch of your own, modify ones on plans if necessary. What I always try to do is make sure the hatch is such that I'm not gonna lose it during flight so I don't have to make another hatch after that flight. Thank you.